日本文学を翻訳する世界の翻訳家とその仕事を紹介するインタビューシリーズトランスレータースポットライト今回はイギリス出身で現在日本を拠点に活動する竹森ジニーさんをご紹介します文芸エージェントや出版社での勤務の後日本語作品の翻訳をはじめ翻訳家としてはこれまで村田さやかのコンビニ人間や中島京子の小さいお家など数々の日本文学を英語に翻訳してきた彼女の仕事に迫ります I was actually living in Barcelona working as a translator from Spanish and Catalan into English and I was also working for a literary agent Also at the same time there was a lot of Japanese people in Barcelona So I got to know some people and I started to get very interested in the culture, in the language, and also in the literature and anime. Also, the literary agent I was working with represented、um, the JFC, Japan Foreign Rights Center agent. And we had some Japanese books in English in the office, so I started reading these. And I started to get very, very interested in Japanese literature because I found it quite different, really, from what I was used to reading. And with all of these things happening, I, I decided that I actually really wanted to learn to speak Japanese. I, I wanted to learn, to learn all about Japanese and Japanese literature. So I decided to leave my job and go to London and enroll in a degree course in Japanese at SOAS, London University. I first came to Japan actually while I was at a university at SOAS.、Um, I spent one year at Waseda University before going back and completing two more years at SOAS. After I graduated from SOAS, I managed to get a job with Cordantra International as an editor. So I moved to Tokyo again and I worked. There until 2006. I, I left at the beginning of 2006. And it was only after I left Cordantra International that I started gradually getting into translation. I did a master's course by distance learning, again, Japanese and Japanese literature, just to get myself back into、um, the mindset of studying and translating and things like that after working in a corporate environment for. Yeah, within a few years, I started translating. Well, that would have to be Izumi Kyoka. <laughs> Kuroda Han Press, which is a small、um, publisher in Kyushu, was putting together、um, a series of anthologies、um, called Kaiki, about Kaiki,、um, ghost stories. We're getting different translators to translate different stories, and I was asked if I'd like to challenge Izumi Kyoka. Yeah, I'd read a bit of Izumi Kyoka, especially in English, and really, really enjoyed reading that. And I had read a little bit in Japanese, and I knew that he was extremely difficult, but I didn't quite realize what I was getting myself into until I started trying to translate it. It was a very, very difficult translation to do. I always think of Izumi Kyoka as a bit like an, an, as an impressionist painter, or in, but rather than a painter with words. I don't think the language is meant to be understood with your brain. I think it's meant to be felt more than anything. As a translator, you have to be able to understand and make sense out of it <laughs> and then put that into English. In the case of Izumi Kyoka, that was extremely hard because it's not intended to be read like that. <laughs> Marata Sayaka,、um, convenience store woman, obviously. It was a very fun novel to translate, and I really enjoyed translating it. It's very easy to read her work, but it's not so easy to put it into English because she has a very unusual way of using words, maybe. And I like to try and get that across in English as well. It should sound a little bit unusual in English as well, so I have to really work on 
getting, getting that across, not making it too smooth, for example. Um, but what was really impressive about Convenience Store Woman was that it was, ended up being so popular. It was a big hit, which was a, quite a surprise. I wasn't expecting that. And also her book, Earthlings, which was the second book of hers that I translated. I really like that book, but it's a very dark, dark book, um, even though it has um, some funny moments in it, if you like, um, but it's, but I thought it was a very important, the subjects it's dealing with are very important. For example, the fact that convenience stores, Japanese convenience stores are very unique and they don't exist anywhere outside of Japan. And this whole book is about a convenience store really, so trying to bring across that image for people who've never been to one um, is one thing that I had to try to work for. Other things are like um, Arbeito Keigo, you know, the, the formulaic phrases that workers in the convenience store use, such as particularly irashaimase, because that doesn't, we don't have an equivalent word in English for, for that. Normally, like when you go into a shop, the shopkeeper or the shop assistants, they don't say anything. They might say, can I help you or something, but normally they don't really say anything. I've come across that word many times in translating other books, but it only, if, I, if I only come across it once, it's easy to maybe just fudge it a bit, um, just say good morning or something like that. In Convenience Store Woman, it comes up again and again and again and again, like so many times that I couldn't just fudge it. <laughs> I had to come up with something that would work. So in the end, I decided to leave it in Japanese and leave it as irashaimase. Because anybody who comes to Japan, that's the one word they're going to hear everywhere they go. And I think readers probably would enjoy that maybe as well. The other author that I'm, I like translating very much is um, Nakajima Kyoko. She's a very different writer to Monata Sayaka, obviously. There's a lot behind her words, I think. The words on the page, there's a lot, there's a lot um, being expressed that comes behind those words, which is quite a challenge when translating. Also, she um, writes a lot about history. Um, so there's a, always a lot of research. So for example, with The Little House, which I translated for her. Um, there's so many names of organizations, of people, of um, political movements, of things related to the war and everything. And I had to check all of these things. And there's so many of them are very, very similar, um, similar names, you know, like the names of different types of women's groups. You're wondering if it's the same one or a different one. And so you have to go back and uh, investigate all of them, uh, research all of them to try and work them out. It's a huge amount of work. In the case of um, Nakajima Kyoko, I can ask her questions as well. She's also very, very happy to help or answer questions and she can also read English quite well. So she is the one author that I actually allow to read my, um, my draft before submission to the publisher. So, um, if there's anything that she thinks I've mistaken, then she can catch that, which is very helpful. I, th I think there are many things that I find interesting, and of course it depends on the period that they were written in, whether it was like early modern or whether it's contemporary now. In the West, we're used to having books, story, you know, novels with a very clear beginning middle with development and a very um, satisfying conclusion, if you like. Whereas I found in Japanese literary works, often it doesn't quite work in the same way. And especially the ending is often left very open, um, which I kind of like, because I feel that it's more like life in a way. <laughs> you, know, like you, you never have satisfying conclusions in life, in, in stories, so. Um, that's one thing that intrigued me quite a lot. 
Another thing that intrigued me quite a lot is that I feel that good and evil is more distinguished in the West. Um, things, it's much more black and white, whether it's good or bad. Whereas in Japanese literature, it's often um, not clear <laughs> or many characters have some good and some bad, which I think, again, I think is probably more close to, closer to life in many ways. Something else I'd like to say as well is, um, especially about the current wave of um, women writing, is the way that they're examining society, um, women's place in society, and how that is changing. In a sense, it's quite refreshing to hear these younger women's voices coming out now. Just the whole process of translation really fascinates me. Um, the whole process of taking a story written in one cultural environment and in one language into a completely different language and cultural environment for, for readers in a different environment. Probably the most difficult bit I find in the process is the first draft. That's when I have to look up a lot of things, research a lot of things. I don't pay too much attention to style when I translate at the beginning. I, I'm really trying to get down quite literally what is in the original Japanese and trying and if I can't find all the details I need then I'll, I'll leave it and go on and try, just try to get the first draft done. That for me is always the hardest bit. Then I go back and I rewrite everything and that's when I, that's when I really start enjoying myself <laughs> because then I, can see all, then I can see the story beginning to come out and I can see the style falling into place and it becomes a very creative process that I find really, really fun. And then I rewrite and rewrite and rewrite <laughs> until I'm satisfied. <laughs> Right now, I'm most interested in translating more work by Murata Sayaka and Nakajima Kyoko. I mean, with Murata Sayaka, we're currently considering, she has another book coming out, which is Life Ceremony. Also the books with um, Nakajima Kyoko, there's two books that I'm particularly interested in, if I might show them. Um, one is Yasashi Neko, which is a very, very interesting book about a mixed marriage with a Japanese woman who has a single mother and a Sri Lankan man. And it's a very sad story in many ways because he falls foul of the immigration procedures and he ends up in detention in Ushku Detention Center. She goes into great detail about um, the problems that immigrants have. And it's not just Japan, I feel. I, I really want to translate this book because she's, she treats it in such a really, really good way. And I think it's relevant to the UK as well and to many other countries. And I would really like people to read this in English. The other book that are, of hers that I'm very interested in is um, this one. This is about the um, Tokyo Imperial Library in Ueno Park. And it's, again, it's a history book, and you see the um, history of Tokyo, and also especially history of literature. Um, several authors appear throughout the book as well. It's, it's an absolutely fascinating book, and I really love it. <laughs> and I would really like to get the opportunity to translate this one sometime as well. So I think that's going to keep, you know, those two, pro you know, those two authors are going to keep me busy, hopefully, for some time. <laughs>